Hello and welcome viewers and subscribers of AVT News. Olisi, the son of Nobe is my name. We're taking it away from politics today to discussing something else, climate change. And in the studio, we have a brother, an activist against uh, global warming. His name is Angiston Mtiane Sivan. Welcome to the show. Um, welcome, greetings, uh, viewers and, uh, and, and followers. Thank you so much for this opportunity, uh, Brother Mpolis. Yeah, um, we are talking about climate change today. We've got an event coming up. Perhaps let's start with the event. When is it? Where is it? What is it all about? What, what is it all about? Okay, we're having a second leg of our Pan-Africa um, climate action event um, in the South Africa edition uh, on Thursday the 19th of, of, of October and the 20th at uh, the Santin Convention Center in Santin Johannesburg uh, in South Africa. Um, this event is bringing together stakeholders in the climate uh, space. It's bringing together activists, those who are in, the, in policy uh, uh, um, and climate justice, those who are climate preneurs like myself, those who have seen an opportunity of making money in the climate space because at the end of the day, uh, if we do not take up these opportunities that are presented by the, the space, somebody else will. So as, as, as a Pan-African movement, we are mobilizing everyone in the in, interested in the what is called the green economy or the secular economy to come and, 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 and listen to the presentations and learn uh, and also so that you find um, uh, your own space within which you can participate and take advantage of this gigantic economy that is presented by climate change. Okay, I, I'm a layman in this whole climate change thing. So, before I go there, I need to have something that pulls me to the event. Try and convince me why I should be there on that particular day. Um, it's very, very important that uh, uh, as, as, as fellow Africans, as fellow South Africans, Zimbabweans and so on, we, we participate. Number one, we need to change the face of conservation. Um, if you look at people that have been involved in environmental conservation, talk of rhino conservation, talk of lions conservation, it's been predominantly white. And most of them are actually people that come from other countries, that come from Europe to do and do to come in, into Africa and do conservation. So if you are passionate about environment, you need to be in this space because we are talking about environmental conservation. Number two, if you are a hustler and you want to make money, I want to be blunt on this one because um, there, there is no there are no two ways about it. The United Nations has, has more pet put climate change as the as the main agenda because it's affecting the attainment of sustainable development goals. It's affecting uh, economies. We are talking when we talk of uh, uh, climate induced uh, natural disasters. Mm -hmm. You talk of your your cyclones. You talk of uh, droughts that are happening. So all these affect everyone. Whether you are a farmer or you are a, a, a musician or an entrepreneur, one way or another, the issues of climate change affect you. So. All these are reasons why you should participate in this event. But more over and above all, if you are looking for money, money is now found in the in the climate space because uh, there is now a new adage: money is now growing on trees. Okay, uh, we've seen you growing certain trees, but we'll get into that. Um, when it comes to climate change, we as Africans, especially a rural educated person like me. Uh, it's something that is something like it's hard to understand. So now I'm trying to say, why should I be interested in this thing? How long will it take for me to understand this um, thing? So to, to, to the, such an extent that I can become a climate premier, let me say. Um, thank you very much. The fact that you and I uh, were educated in rural schools is actually the very reason why you should be the main, we should be the main uh, 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 activists or participants in this space. When we were growing up in the 80s, there was a certain pattern 
um, that that our climate used to follow the weather patterns, the rainfall. We knew uh, rain was going to come in October, uh, November, December, and we knew. But currently, it, the, 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 everything has changed. You can't tell today it's raining, tomorrow it's windy, tomorrow it's uh, the next day it's so hot, the next day it's so cold. This is uh, climate change. So for those who are in the rural communities, the, you actually the, the best uh, people who, who, who are able to understand that things have changed it's no longer uh, business as usual uh, the the environment has changed a lot is not happening uh, we see there's been consistent droughts that are caused by uh, El Nino El, what is El Nino um, the heating up the, the increase of temperature in the at, at the sea level affects uh, the generation of, of the usual clouds when we were growing up we were taught about the cumulonimbus clouds the cumulus clouds and them all those are generally when when water rises from the sea but if temperatures change at the sea you you see the the the, the, the all the, the whole geography that we land gets affected mm -hmm. so because of that uh, it's very important that we begin to educate ourselves we begin to uh, interact with uh, experts and people that are uh, uh, have, have so much knowledge in the space so this conference is bringing those those players those experts um, closer home so that we interact with them and get to understand climate change its effects and this and, and, and the economy that has been created again by climate change because in as much as climate change is there's adverse effects that are affecting us it has also opened up, opened up a huge economy that we must tap into, which is why I say, if you want to make money, find yourself in the space. Yeah. Uh, before we talk deeply about the conference that is coming up, a, a person who is like a peasant farmer, let me say, does contribute in a way to climate change. It may not be that big compared to maybe these big mm. companies, these mm -hmm. conglomerates that are burning fuels every day. But in a way, they contribute, and also there is a way that they can assist uh, in keeping climate change. Absolutely. Can you briefly tell us first how they contribute and then how they can work towards keeping this? Excellent, excellent question. I like that because you are, you are, you are taking this thing to home. Um, every farmer, prison farmer, is it way, we all own cattle. Um, and cows, our own cattle, uh, one of the biggest uh, polluters or contributors to climate change because when our cows burp and fat they emit uh, methane gas which is 80 times potent to the ozone layer compared to to to, to carbon dioxide and, and and as our as we keep our cattle our cattle continue polluting we do not see it but they are polluting Number two, our cattle, when they excrete uh, the cow dung, that cow dung, depending on the environment, when, where it falls, yeah. uh, if it falls in our usual crawls, it then piles up, it begins to generate methane gas in, the, in, our, in our cattle pens. That's why we have uh, an adage, or a, it's a saying that says, uh, the fire that's, that starts in a cattle pen does not go off. Why? Because there is methane gas generation. So methane gas is, is, is more lethal and dangerous and toxic to the ozone layer compared to the greener for to, to the emissions that are coming from the your thermal power stations which are outright carbon dioxide so in a way a, a peasant farmer who owns five cows one cow emits an average of 98 uh, kilograms of methane gas into the atmosphere per year so if you have 10 cows in your mm. village it therefore means you are contributing 10 times 98 kilograms that's your what we call your greenhouse gas emission footprint uh, popularly known as your carbon footprint so you are a polluter how do you do that how do you reverse that there are programs that we are launching where farmers will then have to reconfigure their, their, their livestock management systems. There are programs that we are launching where farmers will then have to convert the cow dung into energy so that they combust the, 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 the methane gas and use it for cooking. Technically reducing the cutting down of trees 
because if if our our rural homes um our, our rural uh, communities get, get access to renewable energy in the form of methane gas which we generate from the cow dung through bio what's called biogas we are able to then reduce the cutting down of trees and at the same time reduce the emission of smoke from our kitchens in the in the rural setup yeah. on the other side um the, the when we participate in our uh, pr uh what sometimes called primitive approach to agriculture conservation farming in zimbabwe we have what is called from Vuza or ukachompo when we do that kind of conservation farming we are in a way retaining carbon in the soil compared to commercial farmers who are using tractors when they are using tractors and they are tilling you expose and, and release a lot of carbon into the atmosphere without noticing it. But for, for, for a peasant farmer, when they use their manual, uh, small way, in a small way, doing one hectare under conservation farming, they are generating carbon credits. So what are we saying? We are then saying all those village farmers that are doing uh, conservation farming, yeah. We have created an opportunity for them to get paid for conserving the environment. So there is the flip side of it where there is money that we have a company, an organization that we are working in with, which is ready to pay farmers that are doing conservation farming. And an average farmer can take home between 40 and 50 euro per, per, per hectare per year. Talk about in Zimbabwe, in the case of Zimbabwe, where we have some farmers that own about as, as, as high as about a thousand hectares. Somebody may actually be seated on 40,000 US dollars per year just by maintaining the environment and keeping their farm as natural as possible. Okay, uh, then let's start there. Uh, you've spoken about an organization. I don't know if the, we, I don't want us to preempt what you're going to be yes. talking about in, the, in this seminar. But for somebody who will not, maybe somebody who's watching from home, because this is an international channel, people watch from all over, who may not be at the event on Thursday, uh, how do they then get to access these funds that you're talking about? What is the name of this organization? Our organization is called Africa Voluntary Carbon Credits Market Forum, and I understand and underline the word forum because it's a forum. It's a it's a pan African people centric movement that is uh, uh, um, uh, pushing and uh, on a on a drive to get Africa at the center of uh, of uh, climate of of the climate action, thereby con uh, tra enabling Africa to tap into this huge economy that has been created by Article 6 of the Paris Agreement which created an opportunity for, for, for carbon uh, offsetting. So um, everyone can play a part in this. You can find us on our, on our website www.avccmf AVCCM AVCCM forum rather I will repeat that www.avccmforum.org um, you can also follow us on our on our other social media handles, or you can even follow me at uh, on, on my Facebook, Angliston Mtia and 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 also Google AVCMF. We have run a, a forum before in Victoria Falls. There is a lot of, of literature around uh, what we are doing. Um, we are also getting into other countries. We've been to, Esw to Swaziland, Eswatini, and we are going to Botswana. We are going into South Sudan. We are going into the Gambia. We are going into Uganda and the DRC. And we are, it, we are taking this crusade across Africa and we are mobilizing Africans to participate in the conservation and so that they benefit from the returns that are accruing through the, 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 the provisions of Article 6 of the Paris Agreement. Okay, uh, so we're also going to post under the comment section, underneath this video, uh, the links and how you can find them. I hope also there is, obviously, it cannot be somebody wakes up today and then tomorrow they've got the money. There is a qualification criteria, there is something that is expected from them as well, I, I, I reckon. Absolutely. And I hope this is explained on your website and on your social media pages. Yes, absolutely. Please do follow us, and 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 and, and, and as you follow us, we keep engaging and educating our each other. Um, it's a, it's not an easy thing. It's a, we take each other step by step until we all become participants in the climate action. Remember, we are going also to COP 
28 in Dubai, where we are going there with a consolidated African position. There are issues to do with climate justice and climate injustice. There are issues to do with the money, like I said, the carbon credits. We want to be going there to Dubai to sell the carbon credits that are generated by our ordinary citizens who are conserving the environment. People that are managing our trees and avoiding the burning down of our forests and, and, and so on. All those people deserve to participate and benefit from the money that's been provided through carbon offsetting. Okay, now let's talk about the event Thursday and Friday. Uh, who is expected to be there? Where are they from? I saw you're one of the speakers. Who else will be there? And how many speakers uh, are we likely to see there? And what exactly will they be talking about? Thank you very much for that. It's very important. We have speakers from the uh, Republic of South Sudan, uh, ministers from, um, uh, from Uganda. Uh, we're expecting uh, local uh, one director from the Department of uh, Environment, uh, Fisheries and Forestry of South, in South Africa. We have also colleagues from other departments like the Department of Minerals and Energy from the Republic of South Africa. And to spice it up, we have our own uh, Dr. J uh, Joyce Chuma who's an expert in climate change and the climate preneur, uh, who's a lecturer at the Midland States University in Zimbabwe. And then our very own permanent secretary in the Minister of Environment, Climate uh, and uh, Wildlife Management, uh, Zimbabwe, Professor, um, uh, Professor, Professor Prosper Matondi. We have uh, a, a colleague in the, in, in the president's office uh, uh, in Botswana, we have experts, uh, quite a number of experts in the finance because you, when you trade these this, uh, the, this carbon credits, they are converted into stock markets. They are tra traded in the, on the stock market like commodities, like your diamond. So we have bankers, we have Andres Brink, one of the guys who have been, whose company has been uh, involved in, uh, in, in the trading of carbon credits. We have Tim Kulu and them. A lot of guys in the finance space, a lot of guys from government departments and the young people from Swatini, we have young ladies who are also coming, who will be speaking, and then we have one um, uh, um, nuclear scientist, uh, Dr. Uh, Tsela, who will be speaking about renewable energy and, uh, and, 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 and the alternatives uh, to our thermal power stations, and he said nuclear is actually another option that African countries need to explore, because it doesn't emit so people have reservations about nuclear, I know, but we all go there and let's come there, let's also follow and learn. Um, and then of course we also be speaking more or less moderating because we are the owners of the space, mm -hmm. so we are not dominating the space, we'll just be speaking on a few other subjects and our own uh, advocates uh, will be also speaking about uh, the legal frameworks that African countries need to, 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 to promulgate in order to take charge of the space. Otherwise if they don't do that, we'll have foreigners, the very same people that are coming from countries that are responsible for the calamity that the world is in who have been polluting since the Industrial Revolution, parachuting into Africa to ambush the money that is meant to benefit people who are in the, developed, in the developing countries. So that's, those are the issues of climate uh, justice that we need to be trashing, and we'll be dealing with those issues um, at Santin. Okay, and briefly, how, what topics exactly? Uh, are you ex I mean, do you expect people to talk about that, to touch about, is it about climate? You, you've spoken about climate premiership already. What else? We're talking about just the first, the basics. What is climate change? Okay. Uh, and secondly, how climate change is affected or impacted our lives and, 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 and how is it um, stimulating re the reconfiguration of our lives and our society and our industries and the way we do, we go about with, every, with, our, with everything that we do. We then have a build up uh, on the, the basis uh, of this intervention of the climate economy. We'll be unpacking the Kyoto Protocol. We'll also be unpacking uh, the Paris Agreement. And then we'll be talking about carbon credits and carbon offsets. How do you generate carbon credits? How, how do you practically create a project that crea um, is then qualified to be called a carbon offsetting project? What are the steps, uh, step by step, to get, get until you get uh, to the money? And then we'll also be talking about how then do you trade? 
How do you sell those carbon credits, converting them into money? How do you monetize them? We'll then also be talking about other broader uh, uh, issues that have to do with the issues of inclusivity, participation of youths uh, in the climate uh, space, uh, participation of women in the space. Uh, we'll also be talking about the broader policy issues um, that where decision makers have to make decisions and at the end of the day, we'll also talk about global politics, the issue of uh, of uh, international relations and their impact on the on the climate change conundrum. Mm -hmm. That's we we'll then be escalating that debate to COP uh, twenty eight, where we'll be dealing with these issues, saying the global north versus the global south. What uh, what has been our policy at and, and our attitudes and our behavior towards each other. And, and also looking into taking into consideration the wars that are going on and their impact on the climate action. Remember, after fighting, after people have, have, have fought uh, Russia versus Ukraine, they will still have a bigger global war that we all must fight, which is the, the, the war uh, to save the ozone. Otherwise, uh, if we if we don't do that, uh, then we also be faced with a, a huge, 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 huge uh, challenge that we is is is, imp is impending and and, 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 and and going to affect uh, the world. Okay. Yeah. The reason why I insisted on the topics was because I wanted even a layman like me to know that there is something for them. And you've already spoken about beginning it from what is climate change. Yes. That is the question that many people are asking because they haven't been taken to a, uh, a platform where a layman would understand. But I get that uh, anyone can be at, uh, at the event and they are likely to come out with something, especially the basic understanding about climate change. And then going forward, it will be easier for them. Now, when you talk about the forum, is it a private public partnership? Is it a government private partnership? What is it? Because you're Thank you talking very about much. ministers, you're talking about uh, experts. Um, climate issues um, best run uh, in a voluntary, by voluntary, by volunteers, as it were. Yes. So we are talking of voluntary carbon credits, and as such, we are a voluntary organization, yes. a private voluntary organization registered in South Africa as a, an, an NP national, rather a, a non-profit organization. I uh, mean, Zimbabwe are registered as a, as a trust, and we keep registering ourselves in, in many other countries because we, we establish what are called country chapters. Okay. So as we establish these country chapters, we are passing, taking the message to each community in Africa to say, let the Africans be at the center of the climate economy, let them be involved in transforming Africa into a carbon sink uh, so that we then absorb the, 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 the carbon that is emitted by other countries and in turn accrue the benefits thereof. So we are non-profit, but we work with uh, private companies, we work with uh, other uh, non-state actors, we work with governments and, and, and para-state institutions. We are an all-inclusive institution. Okay, and how many countries, you've spoken about South Africa and Zimbabwe, how many other countries are registered in, or how many are in, intending to be registered in? Do you have a time frame of saying, after this law, we must be covering the whole of Africa? In fact, uh, um, in as much as we are restricting ourselves to the African continent, we have had stakeholders from far and wide. Our inaugural Victoria Falls Conference, we had uh, delegates from uh, around over 16 countries, Apparently, it was 60% uh, people from Europe in that conference. We had people from as far as Estonia, the Czech Republic, the Federa Russia, Federation, Russian Federation, um, the United States of America, UK, uh, uh, quite a number of other countries. And then, of course, our fellow African countries, Malawi, South Africa, um, um, Zambia, Uganda, Sudan. And, and, and we are expanding to, 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 to the other countries that I've mentioned, mentioned before. So our, our goal in the next three years is to have reached the world, all the 52 countries in Africa and to have established uh, the chapters and, and sub-regional offices in every, in every country so that every African uh, country and every African community is active in the, in, the, in, the, in the action against climate change. Okay. And then when it comes to African governments, especially... Uh, when it comes to fulfilling these promises uh, global or, or, or of a global nature, they usually 
show this lackadaisical approach. Now, with you working with some of them, how do you see their attitude, especially towards climate change? Are they buying into it? Are they, is there political will to participate? There has not been, and that's not just a problem with African countries. That's the reason why the Kyoto Protocol was signed in 1997 and it expired without much um, uh, steps having been taken. Uh, because we have a, a challenge where African countries are at the whims of some global superpowers, mm -hmm. which is why I, I was talking about the, the, the international relations and the, and the, in the climate conundrum. So we, we have some countries that are, are, are in the whims of certain countries that they can never make decisions uh, until a certain country has taken a position, yeah. so, which is why the, the Kyoto Protocol, uh, nothing happened. But now there is an incentive, which is why I'm seeing some bit of interest because we have seen Zimbabwe recently signed a uh, 1.5 billion deal uh, with the company in, uh, in, uh, from the United Arab Emirates. And we have been invited to, to the kingdom of Eswatini by the king himself, King Mswati. And we have seen, uh, seen a lot of interest, which is why we are, doors are being opened to us to, 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 to meet with the heads of states in, in all these countries. Because there is now an incentive, there is now money which has been created through the Article 6 of the Paris Agreement. So we believe that now that there is money, and by the way, African countries can now generate enough money to, to, to pay off their debts to the international that they are owing to the multinational inter-institutions like your Bretton Woods institutions. Yes, yes. Um, if we do our carbon credits projects very well, for example, in Zimbabwe, we, we, we stand in the potential of, 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 of wrecking in 15 to 20 billion dollars. Um, which which is more than in, which 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 is enough to 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 let us out of the debt burden which we are which we are currently under. So now that there is the incentive, um, we are expecting we are seeing a lot of interest now being generated. But that also creates problems because it also creates uh, opportunities for carbon washing yeah. or green washing. Uh, it's, uh, or, or carbon looting. It also creates uh, 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 opportunities for corruption uh, and for, for, for opaque deals that do not benefit communities. But may I then warn this uh, that, that um, African countries, if they are doing this, if, if they go around and, 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 and follow and, and, and be driven, more motivated by the money, they run the risk of, of, of doing carbon washing or green washing. And their carbon credits will lose value and the whole thing will become a facade. Because carbon credits, for them to have value, they must at least uh, have a community, the, what is called uh, uh, community beneficiation and, uh, and what is called uh, uh, additionality. You can't go into a forest and just generate carbon credits. You must do something on that forest to create additionality and create value. And uh, over, over and above, you must be able to meet at least 80% of the sustainable development goals. That okay. ensures that uh, there is transformation of communities, eradication of extreme poverty and hunger, gender parity, sustain, and energy sustainability, and them at least um, uh, 10, 12 out of the 17 uh, sustainable development goals are attained in that community. The, that way you would then be have attained uh, generated carbon credits. So the money is there for meaningful money. Of, so we are, we, are, we are worried that some countries are now seeing that as an opportunity to, to create uh, easy money and, and do greenwashing. And that will take us back again to, to where we started. It's not going to solve the bigger elephant in the room, which is uh, climate change. So when you talk about greenwashing, what is it, by the way? Okay, greenwashing is, uh, is more or less kind of, uh, uh, having projects that purport to be solving okay. uh, the climate crisis when they are not. Okay. There are people that, for example, would tell you that we are we are developing, there was a debate, those who are following the space would fall know that there is a debate around the projects that we have been doing around cook stove, for example, yeah. where people are distributing cook stoves and purporting that the, those cook stoves are enabling in reduction of uh, deforestation and, uh, and, and carbon. 
Yeah. But 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 there have been debates uh, uh, in the space that uh, those cookstoves are actually not solving the problem. So when you do these projects, yeah. um, it's called greenwashing because you are you are creating uh, a, facade. A, a facade. You are creating a, a picture that you are doing something when you are not. You are only okay. benefiting, getting the money. And another another example is a situation where somebody just cla- comes here and claims that they want two three billion from a forest. Yeah. No, you have to start. Uh, there has to be a additionality, like I said. There has to be tangible results and transformation of lives that happens for for that to be to be to be uh, verified and, and 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 validated as a as a, a green project that is, that is making an impact. Otherwise, if you don't do that, you are doing greenwashing. Oh, okay. And then, um, what does the monitoring? to say that Zimbabwe has achieved this. Excellent. There are players, some of them that are coming to Santim. There are players, there, is a, there are international standards that were laid by, uh, down by the United Nations. And then there are experts. Some of them are in the finance uh, sector. Your accounting firms, they are part of the people that validate okay. uh, the, the, the carbon credits. You have experts in the IT use, who use artificial intelligence who can measure the amount of, 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 of CO2 that a certain forest is sequestrating or absorbing from the atmosphere. Um, we have all these players. Each one does their part. And then eventually what we get is uh, validation and certification by um, reputable institutions. Of course, there is also a bigger debate at international level uh, among those institutions. And our desire and our drive is that at the end of the day, we also have our own African institutions that do the validation and certification. Because as long as we are dependent on gold standard, on your VIRA and, and in other international institutions, we remain in the whims of those that that are in charge because they they, they, they they may decide if you are not politically correct, they may decide to undervalue your carbon credit. So in order to, to avoid uh, injustices and, uh, and manipulation of the space, we also need to develop, grow the sector amongst ourselves as Africans. Yeah, that, that was my next question, that how does geopolitics play into this? Because you know, you know, already know about the issue of uh, rating agencies, you Absolutely. have to be in good books with certain, with certain superpowers for you to be considered this or that. Because, for example, Zimbabwe, we know it's a local yet with some Western countries. South Africa is being put in a situation where by they have to choose between BRICS and the West. So now you are saying that there is a push to have an African rating agency in terms of this yes. climate fight. But now, who is going to recognize it? You saw during this ki- the, 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 the time of COVID, some African nations, of course, scientifically not having that, uh, without scientifically proven uh, methods, but they claimed that they have this cure for COVID, Madagascar mm-hmm. being one of them. And these were not considered because they were from Africa. Of course, maybe because there wasn't scientific proof that these things do heal. But at the end of the day, there is this claim out there that as long as something is coming from Africa, it's highly unlikely to get world recognition. So how do you get to like milita- m- m- mitigate against such uh, narratives? Thank you for that. That's a, that's a very important question. Uh, may I start by saying that we are aware that there is mischief. There is mischief around, uh, around the climate issue. And, 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 and we, we have a, an international uh, space. The United Nations is the space uh, that we, 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 we use uh, because the issue of climate change is angled at the United Nations level where it is assumed that at the UN all animals are equal. Um, although, although at the founding of the UN at the San Francisco conference, um, the superpowers made sure that some animals are more equal than others by creating uh, another, uh, the, uh, by creating a, a club of, pre, of the UN prefects called the, the Security Council. Um, notwithstanding, um, the beauty about the climate uh, change issue is that uh, Africa is in charge. Why am I saying Africa is in charge? Because of our underdeveloped underdeveloped under, under development status. Mm-hmm. Um, 
our lack of uh, 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 the, the industrial drive or our drive towards industrialization, our primitive state is now proving that we are actually right in the first place. Because the drive uh, to reverse climate change is then uh, envisaging a situation where we become, uh, the, glow, the world become what is called carbon neutral. Carbon, rather, or, or carbon, carbon negative. Carbon negativity means that we are going back to pre-industrial uh, state. Okay. So we are now, the world is now saying by 2050, we must have uh, become what we were before industrialization. So Africa is already uh, or in that in that relay or in that race going backwards. Mm -hmm. Africa is already ahead because we already have we kept our forests intact. Yeah. When they destroyed their forests and built uh, and turned uh, them into concrete forests, which are cities, um, we we remained with our tropical rainforest in the Congo Basin, in the Great Lakes region, uh, in the Zambezi, in the in, in the in the in the Kazungula, in the in the in the in, in Mozambique and them. We kept our forests intact, so we actually ahead in terms of that race because it's now a race to, towards reversing what we what has been done. So while they are clamoring for that, it will take uh, developed countries centuries or a couple of years for them to 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 reach the state of of carbon negativity or carbon neutrality that Africa is in. So it's a debate that I'm happy to 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 participate in because I'm saying as Africa we are actually ahead in our primitiveness. We are actually ahead in terms of the conservation uh, um, 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 the, the trajectory. But what we need to do is that we need to do what we are doing now. Educate the African brothers and sisters to say, look, let's continue conserving. They are going to come. There's going to come a time where companies from Europe are, come, are going to come to our villagers and they will be on their knees begging, carrying bags of money, begging us for carbon credits uh, so that they are said to be carbon neutral or carbon negative. There's going to come a time where uh, com countries, uh, companies from the developed world, the so-called powerful, are going to come and, and beg the people, our brothers and sisters in the Congo, and begging to, to be recognized as having contributed to the conservation of the Congo person. Because uh, the nature is now taking its toll, and, and nature is now angry at what humanity has been doing over the past centuries. So I'm happy to take on that debate. Politics will come and politics will go, but the fact that Africa remained primitive is now an advantage. Okay, and then we, we've spoken about the role that ordinary people, that is especially in the rural areas, have in this. Uh, but how have you, as a forum, made sure that you don't leave them behind to do things naturally, but do certain things conscious of what it means? in this climate change uh, dilemma. I, I like that because we are currently on a, on a crusade. While we are here in Santin, we have our teams in Zimbabwe um, and we are spreading to Swaziland, we are spreading to South Africa, uh, to communities working with uh, small small groups. In Matobo, for example, uh, Gwanda and Caesar already have people that are signing up. Uh, it's a very short uh, project. We are starting we're at the entry level with the, the soil carbon, uh, um, uh, um, carbon soil-based carbon credits where you do conservation farming, your kajompo, and get paid. Yeah. So, so we, that's the crusade that we are telling our people, please sign up and, and, and we generate, we come and do uh, soil tests in your, in, your, in your small farm or small uh, piece of land. We check how much carbon you are retaining in your soil. And then we train you on how to do regenerative agriculture where you, 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 you abstain from using synthetic fertilizer as where you use bio fertilizers and organic fertilizers, your usual mkuba in our language, um, and, and where you, 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 you allow, you don't, you, you don't till the ground or you, there's minimum tillage. When you do that, 
um, our teams will be there to to make sure you just sign a form our scientists will come take test your soil and see how much carbon is retained in your soil and then we monitor progression if the, you need to if we find five tons of carbon um or t -t -t, we do a baseline and if we have find five tons of carbon per hectare we want to monitor if there is incre in, 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 an increase in the retention so after 12 months uh, if you now have 50 we then pay you for okay. for having generated the uh, um the, the, the carbon sink so our farmers can start doing that and alongside that we'll be launching other projects that include um the re reconfiguration of our fencing uh we need people need to stop cutting down trees uh for fencing because we'll be paying you a lot of money so we expect you to to start uh, uh doing the setting up professionally uh, professional fences uh for around your field we'll be setting up biogas reactors for those with cows to absorb the methane and then when you set up a biogas digester you start switching from using firewood to using a gas stove and guess what it will also come and pay you for 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 use for doing that because somebody there in Europe must give us the money for to to to, to pay you for saving the environment. Okay, uh, and then how is the buy-in from these people on the ground that you you've already talking about spoken about the outreaches that you're doing your teams are doing. People are sometimes skeptical, especially of these new things. How is the buy-in, especially in Zimbabwe? Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, people are always skeptical, and they always be. Uh, but 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 look, uh, nobody doesn't want money. When we start telling you that, and look, we are not talking about something pie in the sky, um, or or set, or Jesus who's coming uh, for the second time, um, etc. We are talking about uh, your people that are things that are doing they they are, they are doing daily. Um, right now we are getting into farming season. They do kachompo, so the zero tillage uh, approach, conservation farming. So when we say to them, look what you are doing doing zero tillage we can actually pay you for doing that so that, that that becomes an entry point who doesn't want to be paid even if we are paying you three euro and you multiply that times your 15 hectares mm -hmm. after all you are being paid for doing what you have always been doing mm -hmm. anyway so you are not losing anything it's just a plus it's an incentive for doing conservation farming so we're seeing quite a lot of um there is a little bit of of, of of paradigm shift. People are beginning to take it up, but we are increasing the 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 the, the volume in as far as uh, the campaigning is concerned, and 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 we will be uh, going more deeper and deeper into those communities um, next year. Okay, and then as a recap, with this conference coming, uh, can you once again tell the viewers the venue of the conference, the times of the conference? and who is uh, invited to be there, how they get to be there. We are at the Santan Convention Center in Santan, in Johannesburg. I'm sure people, who, if you are able to follow a YouTube channel, that means you are able to use your, your GPS system on your phone to locate where Santan Convention Center is. We're looking forward to seeing you there. Climate issues involve everyone, whether you're a student, whether you're a politician, whether you are a Mtwagazi liberation campaigner, whether you are whichever political party you belong to, at the end of the day, climate issues bring us together, which is why uh, I'm, I'm against this insanity of politicizing uh, the climate space and trying to manipulate our people. So everyone is welcome. The participation fee is uh, only 4,600 rands for the two days to cover your meals. But uh, may I abuse my 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 this space and say for your the YouTubers that are following this channel, I'm offering uh, uh, a package. I'm offering uh, ten people that are going to subscribe through this channel uh, free entry for only first ten. And and uh, Mr. Mube, please take 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 keep the records for me. Those who are in Jobrick and who are interested, the first ten I'm going from this channel, I'm going to allow them to to to, to register for free. And then uh, the rest of you who are interested in making in, in, in making money from the climate space, please do sign up, follow our our website again www.avccm forum.org and also follow our Facebook pages, our our Twitter handle, 
all AVCCM, F, AVCCM forum um, and let's meet at Santin and begin to this long walk into the money. Yeah. Uh, so if you want to subscribe through this channel, my number is 073-962-3075. You just WhatsApp, don't call. WhatsApp, and remember, it's the first 10, of which I'm the first one. Anyway, uh, the times, what time does it start on Thursday and end? Friday as well, what time does it start and end? Registration is at 8.30 on Thursday, and we, it ends at 4, 4 p.m. And on Friday, same, same uh, 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m., um, at the Santan Convention Center, please do not miss this opportunity. There you are, ladies and gentlemen, Olisi, the son of Nube, signing off. Let's meet you there. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and share it.